Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India learners welcome to this online course on legal language legal including general english this is lecture number 10 where you people are going to study about proficiency in regional languages so i am dr divya gupta an assistant professor at gla university matra and today we are going to learn that how much importance these regional languages are when it comes to legal juristic writings and even uh, whenever the judges come up with their, uh, with their, I can say, the verdict. In that condition, I would begin to tell you that there are 28 states in India. And after that, along with those 28 states, we have 8 union territories. When there are, like, India is a diversified country where we have so many tribes, so many religions, so many customs, so many people from different uh, like uh, cultural diversities, they stay here on the same land. And this is the reason which actually is the essence of India. When it comes to legal writing, juristic writing, remember my dear learners that the proficiency on regional languages are really very much important. And there are certain statutes, certain rules and certain uh, regulations that are made on the, in the constitution where you will see that how these languages become an important part while giving any kind of verdict. Yeah. So, let us move up to the lecture outcomes. After going through this particular lecture, what are the things that my dear learners are going to understand? So, with this note, I am going to take you to the next level that after this presentation, my dear learners, you all will develop the understanding and the understanding and basically learning about the utility of all those 22 official languages. So, as per the constitution, we have incorporated 22 languages, official languages in India and in this condition 22 official languages in India, what which covered under 8th schedule of Indian constitution. So, there are 22 languages, there are 22 official languages according to the 8th amendment, 8th schedule of the Indian constitution. Further, you are going to learn about the focus, when, when we talk about the focus, the importance of regional languages. Since people, like when we talk about the citizens of India, they feel much comfortable when they speak in their native language or in their regional language. So, in that condition, you will feel that kind of like intimacy of expressions and openness of expressions when it comes to regional language expressions rather than talking in English. Further, I would like to tell you that after completing this lecture, my dear learners, you would be able to analyze the prospects of different legal languages and communication in legal language. So, you all will get to know that in uh, different type of like courts, lower courts basically, all these type of regional languages are uh, applicable according to the state's requirement. Further, you would be able to learn the importance of importance, need and role of English language in domains like academics, professional, social, economic and political. So, this is again an important part where you all will acquaint yourself and will go to the next level of understanding. My dear learners, with this note, I am going to take you to the content part. Which are the things that you are going to learn in this? The content, step by step, we are going to discuss everything. Now, here I have incorporated the list of all 22 languages, regional languages according to or you can say incorporated in the Republic of India and then constitutional provisions or of 8th schedule. So, you will learn about the constitutional provisions of 8th schedule and then 
procedural requirement of inclusion. So, what are the things, what are the reason that how these uh, new languages or regional languages are added along with that those 22 languages like what is the process? I will tell you step by step how a new language is added in that. Further, the importance of regional language in expressions and you will learn the status of English language right now basically since from the beginning. Since from the beginning till now like uh, initially it was decided in 1950 that till 1965 we are going to use English as our as our official language of discourse in legal process. But later on it was decided that after till 1965 everyone will be trained and they can definitely use Hindi language as a mode of communication and uh, for official purposes. But later on what happened like I will tell you how step by step this thing happened and we will explain, we will detail the explanation is required to understand all the intricacies of this. Further you will learn that how, what is the comparison between regional and English language. How this kind of like comparison may be finding the similarity, sometimes finding it easiness to express certain ideas in regional language. Sometimes it, since it became the heart and soul, English became the heart and soul of uh, our country by the time 1965 came. Therefore, like at in many cases I would like to tell you although Hindi is I should say Devanagari Hindi script is considered as an official uh, language. But on the contrary while writing the numbers, while writing the numbers you need not write in Hindi also. You have to use international uh, like numerals for example, 1, 2, 3 rather than ek, do, teen, char. So, still this is again a very complicated matter to understand that we want Hindi everywhere and even our respected honorable Prime Minister uh, Damodar Das Modi ji like he is also recommending this aspect to actually float or make it possible to, to, to emphasize on Hindi language moreover. And we are on the move, we are, we are trying to come up with that whole thing like China, like Israel, like Russia, they have already taken up their own languages for communication, right. But now, yes, of course, we are going to deal with that aspect also that how these things are like playing or running simultaneously while expressing these legal terminologies. Then further you would be able to amend, uh, see the amendment in Supreme Court's verdict language. Recently, uh, that uh, Supreme Court Judge, Chief Justice of India, Mr. Chandrachur has actually come up with this uh, like uh, acclamation or you can say the change in that system where he decided to give the verdict in at least 4 to 5 regional languages also. So, this is also appreciated on 15th of August by our respected Prime Minister Mr. Narendh Damodar Das Modi ji. So, yes of course, this is really very important and an integral part of your legal juristic writings. So, with this note we are going to move further towards the introduction part. Yes, there are 22 languages of Republic of India, 22 official languages I should say and in this condition they are Assamese, Bengali, Bodo, Dogri, Gujarati, Hindi, Kannada, Kashmiri, Konkani, it is of Goa, Mathili, Malayalam, Manipur, Manipuri, Marathi, Nepali, Odia, Punjabi, Sanskrit, Santali, Sindhi, Tamil, Telugu, Urdu. So, there are 22 languages, official languages of Republic of India. Remember, till now, Till now the recent amendment on the basis of recent amendment it is 22 languages, official languages to give the verdict or to uh, use them as an official language for conversation. But still remember my dear learners, still on the higher courts if I say supreme court, if I say all these type of courts we use English as a medium of communication. I will tell you where to change it. There are certain measures, there are certain amendments like if there is a demand of union of, of the state government that they are going to communicate. Suppose if I say MP communicates with union bank, uh, with union uh, maybe like with the government, state with central. 
So MP and UP will, inter will, will interact with each other, send their applications in Hindi. They have a written like a amendment or written notification for this. Whereas like if I talk about some Hindi speaker state and some non-Hindi speaker state, suppose UP sends, it, uh, sends the application to uh, Tamil Nadu. In that condition, what will happen that uh, suppose UP is sending the application to Tamil Nadu in Hindi. It has to send it in the translated version of English also, right, understood. So without, without that uh, like confirmation that okay, UP is, has demanded for Hindi as a, uh, as a regional language, but in that condition, obviously for that communicating between two states, depending on the availability or understanding, they have this by default, yes, English is the uh, mode of communication. But if there is a kind of pact between two states, yes of course that could be changed. So with this note we are going to discuss, I am going to discuss few more things about these uh, regional languages and there these languages have promoted and protected the linguistic diversity of India. Yes of course I told you that with 28 states and 8 union territories there are 36 total like a figure where we, where we can definitely say that this is simply the task of unifying all the diverse elements in, uh, in the same thread of unity and this is the art where our beauty lies. So yes, this is the linguistic diversity. Further, yes, these are 22 languages, each state and union territory in India may use its own official language as well, yes, that is true. And according to part 17 of Indian constitution which deals with the official languages in articles 343 to 351. I will explain all these things in a, a brief detail to you where I would like to include some part languages when it comes to regional language. I should write here when it comes to regional languages basically uh, according to constitution. If I say according to constitution, according to constitution, this language, these languages could be studied at various levels. Now what are these official uh, regional things that we have to understand? First one is regional language. Second one is language, language of the union, right? Third one is languages, language of the judiciary, judiciary and text of laws and fourth one is special directives. Now these things you must understand when it comes to all these special directives like these regional language of union, then language of judiciary and special directives, these four, under these four provisions like you can study these languages. And basically as I told you in my previous slide that it is 344, I should write down 343 to 351. And I am going to mention the utility of each and every one in that condition. If I go through 343. Let me, let me make it much clear for you and I am just uh, going to draw this thing. So article if I say 343 that will deal with like a language of union under the heading of language of union we have several rules article 343 it deals with official languages, official languages of the union right then we have article 344 that deals with commission that deals with commission and committee and committee parliament committee of parliament on official language right then we have article 345 here these two deals with language of the union Understood? So language of the union 343 and 344. Union means the state, uh, sorry, union means the, uh, the uh, entire like country, 
you are talking about or the central government yes so central part is that that which comes in union part secondly the other one is regional language so for the decisions for regional language if i say regional languages this is the second category yes so what about the regional languages you must know that article 345 article 345 that means official language official language of the state so whichever the official language suppose if i say goa goa has opted for konkani right so this is what official uh, regional language because goa has opted for this konkani language goa has opt this official language konkani for their interaction now further if i talk about the next one 346 346 will deal with official language official language for communication for communication between between one state with other state you can say with other state and one state with another with the union so which kind of language this regional language is going to be used with in one state interacting with other state and one state interacting with union so this you have to understand as i have told you that mp has mp and up interaction they will take hindi as a medium of communication but when it comes to the states where non native non hindi speakers and hindi speakers they can definitely interact in hindi but obviously with one letter in hindi they must send one translation of english as well an application in english translated one so you must remember this is the next point next we are going to discuss about something that is article 347 and 348 so you must know in article 347 there is special provision a special provision of what special provision relating to language spoken by the section of population in the society like in article 347 we have a special provision of making new amendments or adding new regional language on the basis of the requirement of the tribals who are living there or maybe the uh, most proficient language in the area so that amendment can be made on the basis of article 347 remember then we have article 348 in regional uh, area context in article 348 language used in supreme court right language used in supreme court you must know and high court high court for acts and bills right so in supreme court remember in supreme court and high court although we can definitely on the basis of special pact you can ask the people to speak or to give the verdict in different languages but still english remains the commanding language official language in the same rule so with this we have understood the process which goes on when it comes to regional language selection clear is that very clear my dear learners and next yes i would tell you few more articles in my next few slides but before that please understand that what is the point of going through these art introduction so status of languages and their recognitions can change over time yes of course with the passage of time it has been decided that in the year 1950 when india got independent after that in the year 19 till 1965 it was decided that english would be the mode of communication english would be the official language right official language but further what was decided that uh, that after every 5 years a committee would be made so in 1955 a committee was made and uh, under the uh, like supervision of uh, you can say vigiri and in that condition you must remember that first time that after 5 years that commission was made but after that in the 10th year yes no commission was made in that condition and no modification was done so later on you must uh, know that 11th april 2020 konkani an official language of indian state of goa is added in the list it is minority language in karnataka maharashtra kerala dadra and nagar haveli daman and diu 
So, it belongs to Indo-Aryan language branch. This is actually a kind of uh, connectivity which uh, gives you the indicate or you it indicates or exhibits the linguistic diversity of our country. So, this is again a very important point. So, with this note we are going to move further that what are the constitutional provisions of 8th schedule. When it comes to the provision, the constitutional provisions of 8th schedule, like I have already told you about article 343 till I have discussed about till 349 that how languages of union uh, will take, will, will be amended, how regional language will be uh, amended. Now, it is the turn to understand how the whole intricate part takes place. The constitutional provisions relating to 8th schedule occur in articles 344 and 351 of the constitution, but I have explained it in detail in the previous slide. I think like you remember all those things, please mesmerize those points. Article 344.1 deals with the appointment of the commission that I have already discussed you with you that article 344. 344 discuss with the kind of appointment of the commission and that commission to make recommendations for the determination of the linguistic states and the languages of to be used for communication between states and center. Okay. So, 344 will go on with the commission with that kind of commission where a committee of parliament on official language will be made. So, how these things are uh, going to make a change? Either the committee committee of parliament, parliament on official language can make the amendment, right? Or maybe some kind of classical language status or maybe sometimes the, the committee, yes, I think like only the parliament, committee of parliament members or these uh, can fix up the official language, that is for sure. So, article 351 states that it shall be the duty of the union to promote spread of Hindi language. So, with this kind of, with this kind of aim actually, it was decided that we all have to promote, that is under section, under article 351, that we all have to promote Hindi language, Hindi language for all the official uh, like uh, pursuits. So, in that condition promote the spread of Hindi language to develop it so it that may serve as a medium of expression for all elements of the composite culture of India. So, now in this condition what is the most important thing that in 1950 I should tell you one more thing. In 1950 what happened in 1950 to 1955 and then till 1960 right. So, that was done. After every 5 year span, it was decided that, that there should be the appointment of committee, there would be the appointment of commission to make the recommendations with regard to the progressive use of Hindi language. So, that was the purpose to, to see the progressive status of Hindi language, right. And in that, in 1955, the commission, official commission, official commission was made under, under, this is very important, please keep a note of this, BG Khere. So, this is the important part where the official commission under BG Khere was done. And that says that in that condition, you must know that uh, let me come up to that slide where you must know that this commission when it formed in 1950 to 55 the aim of that commission was to promote Hindi language clear under section 351. So, article 351 I should say. So, at present demands for inclusion of 38 more languages are you getting it still there is a demand to add 38 more languages, regional languages for legal proceedings, for legal communication is there, the inclusion. So, how the, uh, they are included? I told you that a committee will be made and on the basis of that five years, for five years that committee will see the progressive status of Hindi language and then after 10th year they would certainly add it. So, in the 8th schedule to the constitution, it is like that.
Have you understood my dear learners? How these things are going to play a role? Very important. Then further we go to procedural requirements. So procedural requirement of what? Of inclusion. You must understand how these inclusions are done. I have already explained you that how these inclusions are done by making a forming a committee. A committee was set up in September 2003 recently under the chairmanship of Sri Sita Kant Mohapatre to evolve a set of objective criteria for inclusion of more languages. I told you that 38 more languages, 38 languages are still on the way to be included in that regional language, uh, languages list for communication. In the 8th schedule to the constitution, the committee sub, uh, submitted its report in 2004. But currently, there are only 22 regional languages in that whole list. So, maybe in the coming uh, days, you may definitely hear a kind of amendment which will turn up. So, this is a procedural requirement which is very much essential. Now, in this condition, I would like to tell you, although, although I have told you that when it comes to central and central wants to or union wants to interact with non-Hindi status, non-Hindi states. Now, what will happen in that condition? English will certainly be the mode of, of, mode of communication. Suppose UP is interacting with Tamil Nadu. Now, in this condition, what will happen? Yes, UP will talk in Hindi, but along with the translation of English. Clear? So, both of them will be there. Translation, English translation. Is that very clear everyone? Right? And if suppose there is a like a kind of uh, agreement, pact between two, then means union with the state will always have English as a default language of communication. And suppose if I give the example of MP with UP, they have a fixed official language Hindi for the mode of communication. Is that clear everyone? I think like the things are uh, getting very much clear to all of you. So, is it very much clear that all these states, all these like uh, union and then state governments, they have their different pacts. They have opted for different kind of languages and there is a particular procedure to go on any kind of amendment in that regional language section. So, with this note, I would like to move further about telling you why these regional languages are important. Yes, of course, I should definitely feel, even I also feel the same thing that uh, although I am speaking in English, but I would be much better if I can speak in Hindi uh, because I would be able to explain you in a much deeper manner, in a much elaborate manner and maybe using the native language that you are speaking or regional language that you are speaking, I can definitely explain you everything with more, with more uh, like deeper examples by exemplifying them with the real life examples maybe, so, so as to make it more convenient for you to understand. And that is the reason according to new education policy, there is a compulsion to use the uh, regional language for the mode of communication, for the mode of teaching, yes. So, this is the reason and this makes it an important part of our learning. And then further, yes, so let us begin with the importance of regional language, access to justice we have, we should have the access to justice. Many people who are using their own regal language, like they are not able to speak, I have seen many people living in uh, different areas of India, they are not able, they are unable to speak English. So, does it mean that they, they are, they would be denied to attain justice? No. In that condition, you must know that my dear learners, that all the people who are the born residents of, you can say, the uh, residents of India, they must have, they must have a kind of command or just they, it is a fundamental right to attain the justice, the judgment and to attain the like uh, to get the things, disputes resolved. So, to access the justice, understanding the communication, understanding and communication, it becomes really easy for us if I communicate in regional language. So, many citizens in India are comfortable expressing themselves in legal processes, regional languages rather than English. 
Providing legal proceedings in regional language ensures the individuals have meaningful access to the justice system, right? So, if you find any uh, lectures or if you find any kind of like uh, legal precedents, proceedings in your own regional language that will certainly help you out more uh, in, in much better manner to understand it and to grab it. So, second point is inclusivity and representation. You would be able to represent your own culture your own uh, like uh, linguistic diversity, your own cultural factor also. So, preserving cultural identities through this, you must know that you would be able to preserve, preserve the cultural diversity and that identity that you have. Different people belong to different region, they have their different kind of perceptions. So, regional language is integral to the, to the cultural identity of different religion, regions, communities. Using these languages in legal proceedings helps to preserve and respect the cultural diversities of the country. So, this is they, they have they includes the inclusion of these regional languages have actually preserved their status, they have preserved, they have conserved their traditions, their culture. So, further in this case you would be able to represent also in a very much in a in a much better and elaborate eloquent manner if you use that regional language. So, using regional language allows individuals who are proficient, who are not proficient in English, other official languages to participate fully in legal proceedings. This is particularly important in areas with high percentage of non-English speakers, but there are few countries like China, like uh, we have Russia, then we have several other uh, countries like uh, Israel. They have already made the changes and they have already made uh, their own language, not English, their own language as the mode of communication, as, as their official language, you know. So, whenever there is a high percentage of non-English speakers, yes, of course, they uh, use the regional language at high priority and represent the, their side of the country, their side of the state. Yes, it provides clarity and accuracy because there are many cases when people try to convey different things, but due to the lack of words, lack, lack of expressive uh, mode, because of the uh, lack of knowledge of the, uh, of the language itself, they definitely fail. Most of the time people fail with this. So, effective communication brings clarity and accuracy and in that condition when parties and witnesses can come that can use their native language, they are more likely to convey information accurately and comprehensively reducing the chances of misunderstanding because it is the mode of uh, communication only that creates the miscommunication. People from different region, the same word is used in different parts with a different notion, connotation. So, when it comes to permutation, combination of all those words, yes, definitely they are they give a different kind of expressions to everyone or they explain in a different uh, connotation. So, this is again a very important uh, point because it when it comes to regional language, obviously people are able to understand the clarity and accuracy of that language, of that legal language. So, further it will be able to preserve the legal rights. I told you that there are many legal rights we have, fundamental rights we have, several types of uh, like uh, you can say regulations are there, right to property, right to acquire, uh, right to information, then right to vote, they are fundamental rights, six fundamental rights are there along with several others. Now in this condition, it becomes really very important for us to understand that if you would be able to understand your fundamental right in your own regional language anyone can definitely access it and that is my first point, access to legal justice. So, preservation of legal rights, ensuring that individuals fully comprehend, comprehend legal processes and their rights in their regional language helps prevent miscarriage, miscarriages of justice due to linguistic barriers. Linguistic barriers, somebody is speaking in a different manner, sometimes linguistic barriers come because of the uh, like uh, unability to understand the language, sometimes language barriers are there and then uh, we have some kind of like auditory or sometimes some, some other barriers are there. So, verbal and non-verbal barriers are also there. So, 
yes of course when somebody is using regional language in that condition that person can easily understand and can be able to explain everything would be able to explain everything in a perfect manner to anyone yes further we are going to take about talk about the witness and testimonies the witness could be the eye witness right could be the uh, the proof of any one of any activity or crime so witness testimonies and statements it can it have the capacity to witness all these things like if somebody has watched or has visualized or we can say has been the victim of the same point in that condition of the same crime that means this person can express himself very well in his own regional language rather than coming up and learning up learning those uh, like english diction and vocabulary in order to explain it they will definitely be able to explain it in a much better manner when it comes to regional language so accurate testimonies could be done there is no waver wavering of there is no manipulation of data or facts when it comes to changes in language right so witnesses especially in rural and remote areas may not be fluent in english obviously how would you be able to express or uh, or imagine that a person would be excellent in english language along with all other regional languages no in that condition there has to be a versatile movement versatile like uh, uh, you should give some kind of liberty freedom of expression or the official language of the court conducting witness testimonies in regional languages can elicit remove uh, can can elicit more accurate and complete information so definitely all these things the regional languages the freedom to express them in their own regional language will certainly come up with the accurate datas and figures with the accurate description of anything with the accurate uh you can say elaborate discussion of any event or accident that has happened in front of that witness yes then further you would be able to reduce the intimidation witnesses and parties may feel more at ease speaking in their own regional languages that means like plaintiff and defendant would be able to understand defendant will be able to understand this aspect in a very ma uh, perfect manner more at ease reducing any intimidation or discomfort discomfort they might experience when forced to use unfamiliar language if i am speaking in hindi and the other person is speaking in Tam in tamilian or in kannad suppose if i say then would he be able to understand mine no without the proficiency on hindi and obviously on the other hand Uh, his own language tamil nadu i would not be able to understand his kannad language so what will happen in tamilian and in that particular case what will happen like there would is there is a simple uh, you can say linking language that could be english translated in english that could be understood by both the parties maybe and next we are going to talk about the legal documents and records if i talk about legal documents and records yes official documents when it comes to supreme court i told you when it comes to supreme court that legal documentation is done uh, in english only in english only but if special pact is there it can definitely change into different one okay so legal documents including contracts court orders judgments need to be written in a language that parties involved can understand it is it is legible for others to understand that language you must know about this aspect that if the other person is understanding some other language try to communicate in the same language so using regional languages ensure the, that the content is accessible and legally valid yes so official documents should be documentation should be done in the same language which the plaintiff and defendant understands next promotion of legal awareness that i told you that without this kind of legal awareness you would not be able to acquire justice and in that condition right to justice is uh, somewhere hampered and you must know when it comes to right to justice right to equality right to vote right to uh, property 
all these types of rights if you do not have the thorough knowledge of them you would not be able to attain that, you would not be able to claim that one also. So, legal awareness is also important when it comes to your own regional language. So, legal literacy, promoting legal literacy is vital to empower citizens to understand their rights and responsibilities, disseminating legal information in regional languages helps in achieving this goal. Yes, this kind of goal could be achieved in a much better manner if it comes to regional language. Promotion of this thing and yes, judicial efficiency, the, the, the whole system works so smoothly when it comes to regional language. Even at lower, in lower courts also, uh, we, we communicate or we try to interact in our own regional languages. So, let us talk about streamlined proceedings, streamlined proceedings because that will go in the same stream. Suppose if I say Hindi speakers, they will definitely go with Hindi communication. If I say Tamilian, yes, it will go in the same way, Konkan, Konkani, that will go in the same manner. So, streamlined proceedings would be there. When parties can use their regional language, legal proceedings are likely to be more efficient. Interpreters, interpreters one who analyzes, one who critically analyzes this whole thing, interprets it in his own language. Translators, so critical analysis become more easy, translations become more easy, right? And may still, may still be required in some cases, but direct communication in the regional language can simply the, simplify the process. But direct communication in that will definitely be able to remove that aspect, the intricate part, the complicated part, okay. So, in this condition, you have understood how these things are done. And I have told you about article 343, beginning it from there till I have uh, in, involved this uh, regional language aspect also. So, you have understood these things. Now, I would like to explain you something more about the status of English language. We have talked about regional languages, but still we planned in 1965 that uh, from 1950 till 1965, we would be able to change the official language from English or we would be able to uh, like switch from English language to Hindi as an official language, but we were not able to. So, let us discuss about this article 348.1 of the constitution of India stipulates that all proceedings in supreme court and in every high court shall be in English language until parliament by law otherwise provides. That I told you in article 348, there is a special, there is a provision where all the legal proceedings, all the uh, verdicts would be given in English language until the parliament from by law otherwise provides. This provision makes English the language of the higher judiciary in India. This is again an important one, okay. This is again an important one. Now, you must remember that when it comes to the other part, like we have discussed about uh, like 348, yes, so what is 348? It is a language used in Supreme Court. So, Supreme Court, High Court. In my previous uh, slide also, I have explained this article 348 because it is related to that aspect only. So, which is used in acts, in bills, sometimes in all those kind of like uh, regulations, right. So, verdicts may be sometimes. So, these are the things that you have to be very much perfect and uh, understand about it. Like when it comes to Supreme Court, article 348 works out very well in that condition. Understood everyone? So, with this note, I would like to explain you few more, few more statutory devices that plays an important role in the whole process. Now, now let me explain you something more about it. If I talk about article 349, what is article 349? That means, uh, although I have explained it, special pro procedure for enactment of certain laws relating to language. Now, if there is a kind of possibility there is the special procedure, there is the special, 
Now, this one is going to work out very well. Yes, let us see. So, article 349 that is special procedure procedure for for enactment of certain enactment of certain laws related to language. So, whatever like if I want to make about a change in that whole scenario article 349 is going to play an important role to make about a change in the whole languages in regional languages. Now, it comes to the next part where special derivatives are there. I told you there are four categories under which you can study those languages. Languages in the un of the union, then regional languages and third one is special derivatives. So, let us talk about those special derivatives. Now, special directives are there. Now, special directives are there. In this condition, you must know that article 350, which an article 350A, article 350B, they are there and last article 351. So, you have to understand when it goes to 350, language used, the language used for redress of grievances, for redress of grievances. Now, you have to understand this part that how in article 350, if you want to address any kind of grievance, if the, if you want to address any kind of like uh, in uh, like mishap, in that condition you can definitely use article 350. Further article 350A deals with, article 350A deals with facilities, facilities for instruction, facilities for instruction in mother tongue. So, all the instructions will be given in mother tongue under section 350A, under article 350A and in this condition mother tongue at primary, primary stage, right. This is in under section like under article 350, you would know that all the grievances would be addressed in this manner in uh, under article 350 and 350A will come up with all the kind of like if you have any kind of like uh, want to go for any kind of notice, any kind of like uh, uh, information that is supposed to be provided to everyone, then it would be given in the mother tongue only, right. So, that is article 350A. Now, 350B, now 350B is special office a special officer for linguistic for linguistic minorities so special officers are allocated for linguistic minorities in this condition you must know that for all these type of linguistic uh, like minorities where we have in our India, in that condition the rules and regulations are meant with the basis of with in compliance with the officer that is actually allocated with 350B under article 350B, right. So, that is special directives and in that the last one is 351, in this condition special 351 is directive for development development of the hindi language so all the directives of uh, for the development of hindi language will be done under section 351 right so under section 351 if you want to go on with all the directives of the progress of Hindi language across the country, yes, this is done under article 351. So, these are few important uh, points which everyone should know. Being uh, the students of legal background, you all should know that these regional languages actually play an play a vital role when it comes to the uh, to the kind of like development and progress of our country also. 
So, I hope the things are getting clear to my dear learners. So, the next thing that we are going to focus over here is historical legacy. It will certainly come up with historical legacy. In that condition, the important part is that like if I am going to discuss about this historical legacy, it will certainly depict you, connects you with some kind of like ancient history. English was the administrative language during British colonial rule in India because in my uh, first, in my second lecture, you all have understood that in my second lecture, um, I have told you about the history of, history of legal English, right. I have told you about that history of legal English, please go through that second lecture very carefully because that will actually provide you the foundation of how things developed how that French and Latin influence played an integral role or we can say pivotal role while creating the whole scenario comfortable and perfect. So, during British colonial rule, after gaining independence in 1947, I told you a committee was made and India continued to use English as a language for administration and law maintained continuity and because like in 1950, it got independence, then 1955 it was decided a commission would be made until 1960 after 10 years, yes of course the whole thing was decided. Under uh, V. Giri, yes I told you that under the supervision of uh, B. G. Khere, that commission was made and nowadays in the year like uh, 20, uh, like in, the, in 2004, yes again that committee was made, but still the kind of uh, you can say the modifications, amendments are still taking place. So, next we are going to come up with uniformity and accessibility because uh, uniformity and accessibility because using English as a language of higher judiciary in India ensures uniformity across the, across the world, yes of course the country, across the country and it allows legal professionals from different regions of India where numerous re regional languages are spoken to communicate effectively and understand legal documents. So, if union or central, if central wants to communicate with state, it will certainly without pact, if it is a default one, then English would be the mode of communication, right. So, this bring, brings about the uniformity and accessibility. Legal precedent, legal precedent, English is the language. Now, since we are talking about English status also, that why English actually by the constitution of uh, India, English could not be like eradicated or you can say like it could not be, uh, we, we were not able to detach ourselves from English because English has the uniformity. And when uh, it comes to legal precedence, everyone from different parts of India would be able to understand if this is in English. So, English is the language of legal precedent and legal education in India. Legal documents, judgments, statutes, case laws, everything is written in, in English only. Maintaining the English as a language of legal proceedings in that condition. So, this is actually the, you can say, now it has become the heart and soul. Where, where we are trying, the entire commission is trying to bring about a change in the whole scenario and then for the international legal systems, when it comes to international legal systems, yes, when we are talking about LPG, if we are talking about liberation, privatization and globalization in that condition, we know that when it comes to liberation, privatization, and globalization. You must know that English has become the global language. English has become the global language, right? So, English is widely used in the global legal system. And that is the reason it allows India to be to participate in effectively in international legal matters and communicate with international legal bodies and organizations. So, it very easily helps us to understand the law, rules, regulations of every country in a proper manner if it is in English. So, uh, while talking about the globalized world, yes of course, in the age of LPG, we all would be able to connect ourselves very well when we know about more about uh, in English. Now, let us compare English with other regional languages. So, 
there is a kind of little bit of uh, uh, you can say although they both are incomparable they both have their own utilities right we are indians we are we most of us are speaking hindi but still like uh, we cannot deny this fact that english has to be a part of uh, this also so english remains the primary language of higher judiciary until any pact would be signed right second love for native language if we have the love for native language regional languages are used extensively in lower courts so whenever we talk about if we go to uh, any other like state they would be interacting in their own regional languages even at lower courts in lower courts also communicating and with litigants and witnesses that i told you plaintiff and plaintiff plaintiff and defendants you must know about this who are more comfortable in their native languages for recording local local documents so you must know about them that love for native language is certainly lead towards that aspect and additionally the use of regional languages in legal proceedings may vary from state to state as i've told told you that within india based on local news practices every each and every information is provided in different regional languages we have like uh the trans translated scripts of every uh, legal proceedings in their own regional language so it's hardly it hardly plays an uh, like uh, creates any kind of like uh, you can say problem or uh, lack of understanding could not be like uh, is is uh, is uh, not faced in that condition efforts to promote regional languages yes the main purpose of coming up while adding these 22 regional languages in that whole list and still 38 uh, languages are still waiting to be added it's because they want to promote regional language and further english is designated as a language of higher courts parliament decides otherwise changes the provision changes to the provision would require legislative action by the indian parliament i told you that legislative action by the parliament this is very important if you want to bring about any amendment in that languages system so amendment in supreme court's verdict language so recently i would like to tell you that in the year 2023 15th august even narendra narendra damodar das modi our honorable prime minister he appreciated the effort of cji that uh, yes of course who is who has given up this uh, chandrachur who has given who has often stressed the need of using verdict of using regional language to to express the verdict or give the verdict of any law so let's talk about pm modi sc uh, initiative to making this thing possible and uh, stress the need for courts to provide judgments according to uh, business today i have just quoted this one in regional languages in january this year the supreme court uploaded near 1200 of its verdicts this is really very much important everyone this is the current news so court supreme court uploaded near, nearly 1200 of its verdicts in regional languages right initially the supreme court translated the verdicts into four languages hindi tamil gujarati oriya okay so these are four languages in which supreme court has given its verdict and still waiting to be translated them to be to be like presented in different other regional languages also later the verdicts were made available in hindi oriya gujarati and they are planning to come up with that the judgments are available in courts e s s c r portal so this is again a very important part and now we come up to the conclusion where obviously we have we are living in the state where india is a diverse country where all the religions and all the customs all the languages all the cultures survive together on the same land with 28 states and 8 union territories i have told you that how this modification and amendment takes place when it goes to regional language inclusion of regional languages and how does it make it more proficient for anyone to deal with legal proceedings and with legal juristic writing so my dear learners after this lecture i hope that you must have received some kind of like uh, like detailed knowledge about how this transformation took place and who is responsible and which articles are incorporated while making this change in uh, like uh, the status of regional language and official language 
So, yes, to respect the ling uh, linguistic rights of their citizens, this uh, principles of uh, fairness and equality and justice is used and it actually when it comes to regional language, it actually ensures the access of justice, preserves cultural diversity, facilitates clear communication. I told you critical thinking also with the, with the testimonies, with the recordings because they are real, they are authentic now and they are not manipulated. So, promotes inclusivity and representation. So, with this Official Language Act 1963 reiterates and provides under Section 7 that the use of Hindi or official language of state in legal proceedings that yes of course they are going to provide some kind of assistance to Hindi also as the mode of communication. So, these are the references that I have uh, referred to. These are the books that I have referred to I should say and uh, you can definitely go through these books very often so that so as to cater the information related to regional languages, official languages, some other 38 languages which are in a queue to be incorporated in that list. So, they are Encyclopedia of Language and Linguistics, then Introduction to Forensic Linguistics, Language in Evidence, then Translating Law, Multilingual Matters, Forensic Linguistics, Advances in this and then we have legal language, further we have an introduction to legal language and culture of the United States, then legal discourse, multilingual, multimodal and multiperspectival, then we have speaking of crimes, the language of criminal justice, the definitions. So, these are few other uh, regional languages like books that are based on these languages and uh, mode of communication. So, with this note, I am Dr. Divya Gupta signing off for now and leaving you with a rest of like uh, inquisitiveness that how you are going to bring about a change and amendments in the current situation of Hindi language. So, it is the task everyone like including the central government also, union is also taking steps to bring about the provisions of improvement and uh, like spreading Hindi and making it as an official language. In the coming days, we are also going to do something for it. So, NEP has actually been the step of the government uh, introducing Hindi as, an, as a mode of communication or maybe not Hindi specifically, regional languages should be used for communication. And now, yes of course, new modifications, some amendments will definitely take place to float English or to use uh, like uh, regional languages as their mode of communication and promote Hindi as much as uh, we can. Yeah, so thank you everyone. This is Divya Gupta signing off for now.